Hello and welcome everyone to another episode of Champions of Inspiration. This is a longtime friend uh, that we're going to talk with here today. Sandra D is uh, known as a television act actress, an international speaker, an author, a TV and radio host. Uh, we've actually done an infomercial together back in the day. Founded Charisma on Camera uh, back in 2010 to really start her performance coaching and now has uh, launched, or in 2018, launched Horsepowered Consulting. So, Sandra Dree, thanks for joining us here on Champions of Inspiration. Hey, I'm glad to be here. I love I love everything that you're about, so um, it's my pleasure to be here. Well, I appreciate that. So, you know, you were on camera all that time, and that's where we first met way back when, and you were so good at that. What created the shift? into working with horses and what you're doing today? Well, there was, there was a few steps in between, but um, to make it really simple, I was in front of the camera since I've been 11 years old. And for me, it was, uh, it was an escape from what I thought was a life that had little value. So I was one of those people that was taught some stuff that was pretty much what I would call a lie. So if anybody's growing up with critical households or somebody in their life that bullied them and they believed that information that they were given, that they were worthless or something like that, um, they'll know what I mean by, by believing that lie. But as an artist, and I've worked with artists that do this, a lot of times artists will put their work forward, like, look at this, don't look at me. So as an actor, that's what that was for me. And I found my peace and my truth whenever I would be outside, even when I was young, always playing in nature and trying to figure out how animals talk to one another. Usually I was by myself out there and uh, just trying to communicate with anything that came across my path. And so I had these two parallels of the performance and then what I thought was truth in nature. So the ironic thing is when I started working with the performance coaching, that seemed like a logical path to go from being in front of the camera to teaching people how to be in front of the camera and find their own their own voice, because I had done that. I'd gone that far where I actually was very comfortable then with my own voice being me without having to be a, a character. It took a long time. But the horses came, actually it's not too disparate because when I was working with people, helping them find their voice, I did for them what had been done for me and what I had created which over a very long period of time. I found what my personal strengths were and I agree to appreciate that and work with what I had, as opposed to trying to be something else. It's especially in the industry of Hollywood, it's a really easy thing to do is to try to be somebody else, I'm try sure. to mimic who is the most popular influencer or whatever it might be even in social media today, right? So um, to find my own voice, to help others go inside, find out what, remember, basically I say, remember who they are. Remember all of the beautiful things that have been given to them since they were born. And I do the same thing now, only I now work in a very nature-based environment. So now we're using that communication and leadership approach and focusing on that, but I am putting people in a rather uncorporate environment. There are no big fancy lights. There's just birds and horses and dust and dirt, and it's really bringing it down to a very grounding level of communication and relationship. And I think when you start from that point, um, which is what I had early on in my life, right? I'm now putting it all together. When you start from that point, I think we can create some amazing effective communicators and amazing leaders. And that ripple effect from there is just, you know, that's what gets me up in the morning. So. I, th I think it's fascinating to, again, follow the path. Everybody's got such a unique path that, that comes on the show. I, I just think it's fascinating to hear how they got from where they were to where they are today. And some of the things you're looking at, you know, uh, realizing that you could use horses as part of this journey to, to work with people. How are people accepting the, the role of nature or the util, utilization of the horses in your consulting and what's going on? Uh, there's got to be some great stories. It's, you know, it's fascinating. There are so many things that come up over and over again. In fact, I've started writing them down so that I can actually create content from this, right? So people, first of all, say, oh, I get it. I've been around horses, one take. I get around, I've been around horses. We used to ride when I was little. And then I say, well, we don't ride the horses. 
in this. And they kind of look at me and take a step back because this is totally messing with their whole idea of how things should be. You know, what do you mean? You ride horses. That's what you do. What else would you do with a horse? Like literally that has been said to me so many times. <laughs> and so right off the bat, we run across what our beliefs can force us to see the world like. In other words, we look through that lens of our own experiences and our own beliefs and what we've been taught. And the use of this particular animal is one of those things. It's like, well, there's nothing, no other reason to have a horse other than to ride it. I'm like, no, actually, we're going to completely change the way you look at this. And you're going to be working on the ground without any tools. And you're going to be building a relationship with a sentient being that has its own personality, own way of looking at life and doesn't speak your language. And I guarantee that the stuff that gets in the way of your personal relationships with human beings is going to show up in that arena. I don't know exactly how, but something is going to show up and you're going to say, oh, this reminds me of, and you're going to let us know right off the bat. It happens every time. So the transformation is very true. Horses are brutally honest. And the other thing that I love about the approach with nature-based trainings that, that we see right now is gaining popularity. And I think that is such a great thing. So whether somebody comes to what I'm doing or they find another way to find equine assisted coaching or some sort of outdoor therapy, even if it's their very own, hey, I'm going to go once a week and go for a hike in nature. You know, I think that that is such a wonderful way to reconnect to the rhythm of the world that we are all a part of. Yeah, the, the first that I had ever heard of this, my wife was out at uh, Marival, uh, out in yes in Arizona and they have a horse whisperer there. And uh, I don't remember, there was some group that went out there and, and filmed part of that and the interaction of the people and, and the horses, it, you know, I mean, people were saying it, everything from absolutely magical to- Yes, that's a word that comes up a lot, yeah. This is pretty woo woo. <laughs> you know the other <laughs> the other side of it like how does this work so what can you how can you help those who may think this is pretty unique because it is pretty unique how can you help them <laughs> understand um some of the um ahas and discoveries that come out of this well first i'd like to address what you said about it feeling magical can we do that sure absolutely Okay, um, that is something that I hear a lot and it may feel magical because the transformation is unexpected. Again, most people, even if you've grown up with horses, worked with horses, trained on horses, or you've just watched horses in movies growing up, which is pretty much what I did. I didn't have my own horse really until I was like late, late 30s, right? So I was always in awe of them. I had my own idea of what they were. So to have that completely flipped on its head in an experience where you have a connection and an exchange with this animal, it is very eye-opening. And in that aha moment, it feels like magic. The reality is there's a lot of science behind what it is that we're doing. You can even look at it as a simple cause and effect. You've heard that phrase, you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. This is that in, a, in its essence. So when you start Stop. For instance, people say, well, I don't know what horses like and they get frustrated. You know, I don't know what horses like and they're trying to make this connection and they're frustrated because they can't get out of their own way in their expectation of what this relationship should be. And so I said, well, you don't know what somebody new that you're meeting likes. You don't know what your new boss likes, what your new love, potential love relationship is, is, you know, you don't know what they like, you've got to figure it out. You've got to figure out what makes them tick. Where do they come from? How are they feeling at the moment? Really try to make that connection. And when they are, allow themselves to be open to that type of creative thinking in a way, when it comes to relationships and communication, then the whole world seems to open up. But there is neuroscience, there's biology, there's biopsychology, there's so many things that come into this. In fact, my co-facilitator and I follow a modality that is based on trauma therapy. So we actually learn an awful lot about the nervous system, about the brain and how the brain develops. And we're coming from an area that is kind of therapy based. And although what we're doing with equine assisted coaching for leaders may have a therapy benefit to it, there may be some, 
it is not therapy. So we are not doctors. We don't have a psychotherapist standing next to us. And I, I deliberately make that clear because we have incredible value with what we're bringing to help leaders become better leaders and better communicators. But therapy is also brilliant in its own way. So when you're working one-on-one -on -one with, a, with a client and you have a therapist next to you, you can really delve deep into some serious things like PTSD, like trauma, recovery, and all of those kind of things. Even addiction, I'm sure you probably heard that they're using this type of work now for addiction and so many different ways that that, that therapy can work. What we do is very based on, on um, the object is really to help leaders really develop that communication level that they can keep people loyal, engaged, and even from the stage, you know, it's great for speakers. Well, it, it, again, I, um, you know, I can imagine people coming up and, you know, here's this significantly large animal, right? <laughs> Much bigger than us. <laughs> Much bigger than us. Uh, thank you, Captain Obvious. Group brilliant, <laughs> brilliant right there. Um, but but all of a sudden they they come up and they um, I would think that they would have to almost naturally let their guard down a little bit because that, it's such a juxtaposition to the day to day hustle and bustle of business. Yes, I would think that they, would, that they would have to do that. And then the extension in my brain, at least from that, is all of a sudden here's this sales professional or this person who you know has been this uh hard charger most of their career you know and they come up to this very large animal and go wait a second what, what the heck is my boss thinking here you know getting us involved in this that's never happened right it well it has very infrequently, you know, very infrequently. I have, I've had a few people who I would call them skeptics that were, that came along with a corporate group, you know, when they were kind of sitting back going, I don't really know about any of this stuff. And I always get excited when I see them because those are the ones that usually will end up with a, an amazing transformation. If they just have a small breakthrough, it'll crack open. Like it, it'll be incredible. They probably and, become your biggest uh, cheerleader during the rest of it too. Yes. They, once they have their yeah. little aha. Uh -huh they can and i had one one situation where um a woman came in if i may share a story and keep her you know kind of sure you know, I'll, I'll protect her but let's just say we, we had a woman that came in and and she was skeptical she was actually a little skeptical of us as instructors um she was a woman of color and my facilitator and i are white and i didn't see that i i you know i i, I don't know how to how to word it. I didn't see it until she, I caught her making gesture to another woman and like, don't worry, we're, we're together in this. And I looked over and realized she was doing that to another woman of color. And I thought, well, that's odd. Um, so she was very careful about what she showed, you know, what she, how happy she was even. And she seemed to, when we came to our introductions, she had amazing energy and we, my co-facilitator and I both talked about her afterwards that her, her energy is so powerful, but she's very angry. And by the end of that week, we realized that she was working daily with something that was very passion felt for her, but it had to do with social change. And so she was sitting with people that were being discriminated against daily, and they were sharing their stories with her she was taking them all on. I mean, taking on all of the stories and holding on to them and letting that fuel her to get her job done. What she learned by the end of that week, weekend, just two days, by the end of that weekend was we were not out to get her. Nobody was out to get her. And that realization came when she realized that she needed the self-care where she couldn't bring herself to a level where she could actually relax it was not easy for her to do that. And she said, I thought I was doing enough of that, but I realized I wasn't. And she then realized, as we could see as, it, as the day went on, that she was holding on to all of the stuff that her people were giving her. And so therapists will have the same situation where they really serve folks better in what they do if they are able to let it flow through them so then they can support the people that they're working with. She was holding on to all of it. 
and it made it very difficult for her to be really be present as as we saw in the beginning where she was very skeptical and and not trusting us at all had she you know by the end of that she says this was so wonderful you were so giving and you know everything was just the exact opposite as you said right. the exact opposite of where she started but the best thing about it is i have a photograph from her on day one and i have a photograph of her at the closing of the retreat she looks completely different yeah i would i and would believe she she'd have to let all that stress and pressure yeah. just dissolve yeah yeah there's a certain rhythm in nature and when we get out of it that is i believe where disease disease comes from yeah. and i see it in people that are stressed they don't have to be entrepreneurs or ceos or c-suite anything i see it with people that are working in in admin as an admin professional i've gone and spoken to those groups and i can see it in them because when i say what is it you're looking forward to they said going on vacation laying on the beach and drinking beer <laughs> not now, doing the dang thing You've heard, but you've heard this, right? Like, oh, I just yeah. want to go lay on the beach. They got that right. At a subconscious level, their body is telling them, get on the beach, get on, literally lay on the earth. That is, and hear that rhythm of the ocean coming in and out. That is one of the draws to that. So when I saw so many of these people saying, I just want to go to the beach. I just, I just want to lay in the sand. I just want to hear the ocean. All of those things are their subconscious or their soul calling them back to that rhythm that we are all a part of. And so when I see the ladies come in, the type A ladies, the, a lot of times will come to these retreats and, and the men as well. It's a, it's a little bit of a challenge sometimes. I mean, they're grateful at the end of it and it, they come into it like it's going to be fun, but they will inevitably have some moments that they have to really do an internal check and realign, you know, I, I, and then they're able to remember how awesome they are. <laughs> yeah, I, I would absolutely think so. I mean, what just when I coach, I coach intuitively stuff just shows up. And sometimes I'm like, what's that here for right now? But what just popped in yeah. is, was a part of a conversation I had a couple of days ago with a client. And we were talking about heartbeats. And oh. that it, it's that heartbeat sets the course of nature that most people never realized. And, and when she said it, it was like, so what are you saying? The heart takes in, the heart pushes back out, and then the heart rests before it takes in again. And it was such- it, I've never heard it described that way. I hadn't either. And, and as you were talking about this interaction of this woman with the horses and with you and, and your co-facilitator and what you're doing, it was yeah. this, I, I think, you know, what came to me was she took in, she took in, she took in, she took in, she took in. But if you'd never let out and you'd never rest, rest, you, you expand to the point of popping, uh, you know, in a weird yes. kind of way. And so I can see the, it's funny just discussing being around the horses and what you're doing. I can feel the calm that can come from that and then the clarity Good. which <laughs> yeah. well but the clarity that must come again here's your type a sales guy going wow i can i can actually do this better now this can affect me in a positive way yes, yes. and it usually does it does i mean my job once people leave here we offer some follow-up you know even if it's just a single call that, that will help them kind of integrate again, what they learn. I mean, they, we, they leave with tools and things, you know, certain things for mindfulness and stuff that we use before we go in and work with the horses. They take that stuff with them, but there's also just the kinesthetic remembrance of what it felt like to be in alignment and what it felt like to be present and calm. And when you get back to the chaos of real life, so to speak, you know, it's very easy to lose that. So that's one of the reasons that I think follow up or, or even returning to that type of work or nature, but we invite people back every several months if they want to, to come to a retreat and do the experience or a similar experience, at least again, because it does take, it takes practice. It's really easy to get back into your habit of go, 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 go. And so much better, as you said, to allow that rest. That was a beautiful 
uh, description of of the pattern of life, you know, take in, let let out and rest and take in and let out and rest. It's I'm bad with the rest part myself. So I need to work. I have to consciously put that in my schedule. <laughs> yeah, but I am too. It, it's, it's like, gosh, time is ticking by. What could I have gotten done? <laughs> you know, but I, yes. but I agree wholeheartedly. So you work with a lot of women and there's been a lot of fabulous improvement. I don't even use the word change. Everybody resists change, but they love improvement. So how have some of your clients <laughs> improved through this process? Oh gosh, I have one woman. I mean, you just asked me that and I get a, a slew that come across my brain of who I could choose from. So um, I'm just going to go with one that, that came to me. One woman um, was leading an international team of, uh, of people for a large organization in a large city. So very prestigious job. And when this woman walked in the room, she commanded a presence. And when she, you know, we go through an intuitive exercise, which I realize a lot of women in particular in corporate may have actually shut down because it was considered woo woo if they said I had an intuitive hit. Do, don't, don't do that. But if they say gut instinct, like a guy does, they're fine, right? Yeah, exactly. So, so she, she, she comes in and, and we do this intuitive exercise and she grabs her equine partner, her horse that she's going to work with. And, she chooses at that point the largest and strongest and most athletic animal that we have in the herd. And somehow it, they looked appropriate together. She was very tall, you know, as I said, had this very commanding kind of presence about her. And she proceeded like throughout the day, she had been working with the horse for a bit. I said, what would you like to do now? And she goes, I want to make her run. <laughs> okay. Keep in mind, we're doing this exercise in a round pen. So she's not going to be running a muck, right? She's running in a large round pen. And so this horse being athletic was way more than happy to oblige and just started taking off. And this is in the summer here in, in central Texas. So the dust is flying, you know, it's dry <laughs> as could be. And it's very dramatic. And, and I realized that this woman is like, I I'm so out of shape. And she's running after the horse to keep the horse running, she thinks. <laughs> She thinks, yes. And so, you know, and I'm not, I'm noticing this and I'm, I'm waiting and she goes, oh my gosh, and she finally stops to catch her breath. And I said, so when the horse is still running, by the way, the woman is now stopped. The horse is still doing what she said, you know, she wanted it to do. And I said, so what is it that, you know, you wanted her to do? And she goes, well, I just wanted her to, and, and right in that second, she stopped speaking and she goes, oh my gosh, this is what I do. And like, what do you mean? And I, I said, you can stop your horse now. And she just put her hand up and the horse came to a stop and came right to her. I said, so tell me, you know, what, what was going on? And she said, this is what I do with my people. No matter where they are, she goes, I give them a task and I run after them. I don't allow them to do what I ask them to do without, I guess you could say she you, kind of like a version of micromanaging. Yeah. And it was exhausting her because she was dealing with people in all different time zones. And she said, this is exactly what I do. And I went, okay. So for her, I mean, just what you were saying about rest, right? It made her realize, gosh, I need to just sit back, let them be what they are, check on them every once in a while and let things go the way they, they go, you know, and just trust that my people are going to be able to handle what I give them. And that was huge for her and probably very well received <laughs> the people that she was exactly. micromanaging <laughs> yeah like, hey yeah. can you go to, can you go back there next weekend <laughs> one of those <laughs> yeah. can you take exactly and so, you know away? some of the some some of the changes i'm sorry just want to say some of the changes or or transformations are very subtle they're not all that super fantastic and and in you know loud some of it is that they're working with another woman teaming up for some of the retreats we team up and so they then have to work together with this horse and realize i let them choose who they're working with and the horse they're working with and it always works out perfectly we can have two i guess you could see alpha females right to dynamic, focused, driven women get together and they will choose a very sensitive horse, which means that if their energies collide, that horse is going to shut down or back off. So they have to instantly learn, oh, okay, they have to learn, I guess you say, how to play nice in the sandbox, right? <laughs> and because it's a, it's a retreat and it's fun, they can do it, but, and they do. 
And at the end of that, they will come and give me some of the most amazing feedback of that experience because that's something that in real life they may be afraid to do because they're afraid they won't seem strong. And then they realize the strength really comes from meeting someone where they are and having that conversation and then moving forward from there. So there's been some really beautiful things that have come out of these. I mean, every, every time there's amazing stories and beautiful things. And I can never tell you what it's going to be. It's just always, that's the fun part for me. It's, it's a surprise. <laughs> well, you get to, you get to be the observer and, and take it all in. But again, what came to me there was all, all of a sudden you have this, this type A woman who's already probably um, feeling a little, maybe a little bit out of position or whatever, that all of a sudden now works with a horse that, that she can open up to and not anticipate judgment. Yes, there is none. Right. It's, there's just, I'm a horse. I'm a horse. Yeah. And, you know. <laughs> there's no story. They, they don't live in story. They don't believe your story. They just tell you how you're being right now in this particular moment. And can you imagine if human beings did that, the world would be a very different place. <laughs> you know? well, no, I, that's what I was getting. I mean, it, again, I'm, I'm just listening to, as you're describing these experiences, what valuable ahas and, and experiences to, to go. I was chasing everybody all the time. Gosh, what a great way. What an epiphany to come back to my, your team and, say, you know what team, I believe in you, you know, and, and let them, the, the impact, I guess what I'm searching for is the impact of one person being with you and the horses and what that can do and translate into in the office setting as they go back. It's gotta be huge. Each one of these people that comes, and like I, I say ladies, but we do have mixed groups more and more. We're getting more mixed gender groups coming in. And so I should just say, you know, the men and women that that come through here, I don't, how do I put this? People will say to me, oh, you wanna build a global company? And I'm like, here's the deal. I don't need to have a global massive, like Tony Robbins type of thing. If I can work with people that are, leaders of communities and companies and corporations and and leaders of other people and they come back like you just said with those changes and they lead from that that really grounded empathetic strong place where they can listen and lead and give themselves rest and learn that trick of balance which is never really in balance right, right. but do the best that they can to regulate that they show that to their communities and so then the, they're living people will want to strive to have that same type of leadership below them and so there's this ripple wonderful ripple effect that i i can perceive and i'm hoping will continue for the work that that we're doing and that way i don't have to reach all of these people i just need the great people the you know that will come in and lead in this way that will then hopefully transform whole companies, corporations, and communities. Yep. I uh, created a meme not too long ago. It, I was in a conversation very similar to this. And I said, be the first stone. And the whole meaning is the first stone is what causes the ripple. You know? Just, oh, yes. Right? Be the first stone. Start the ripple and, and get that out. You're doing such an amazing job of that um, in such a unique way. Uh, hard to believe we've We've burned through our time already. It's, it's fascinating what's going on. How about a, a, you know, a little piece of wisdom that's come out of this for you that you can share with everybody? Oh, well, I can take you back to my very first horse before I ever did any of this. Okay. My best life coach, I would say. Like I said, I was in my late 30s, actually, when I got my first horse. And I remember being very, I just started my company my first company and I remember being so caught up in go, 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 go. And I'd walk up to the stable because at that time we didn't have the farm, we boarded our horse. And so I'd walk up to the stable and, and I'd walk up to her stall and she would immediately pin herself to the back, the back wall. She wanted nothing to do with me. Wow. And I'm like, I don't understand. I'm calm. 
I'm perfectly calm. I was not calm at all. <laughs> like, you know, I, I may have been standing still, but my insides were just going a mile a minute. You know, my head, my brain wouldn't stop. I just, I was not really present at all. And I didn't know that. I thought I'm standing here quietly, you know, but I'm burning up inside. And that was my first lesson was when I accidentally would find that place of complete relaxation, she would walk right up to me. That's why. And I would have to say, what did I do differently? You know, now that's what I help people understand. But but at that time, I really thought that I, I was being calm and quiet. <laughs> I actually really wholly believed that, that was I was doing it, man. And it, it, it took an animal and the fact that I paid a lot to feed and house this animal and she did not seem to like me, right? <laughs> the good majority of the time, it made me mad. I was like, why I feed you, you should be nice to me. Well, they don't see that. They just see how you're being. And that was in a rough way, my, you know, being tossed into, into the fire with this, with this lesson was I had to learn to regulate myself and bring myself down and be present, which is a beautiful place to be because then you're able to receive everything that I think God has for you, all the wonderful experiences that people miss in life, even the smell of the roses. Or today I was walking through a, a um, Lowe's hardware store past the plants and I was like, what is that amazing smell? And it was lavender. They just brought in a bunch of lavender. It smelled so good. But there was definitely a time where I would have just been task focused, gone straight past that. And how beautiful is it to have that reminder to just be present? Even if it means putting off your to-do list for five minutes while you just sit outside and listen to the birds yeah. and bring yourself what, back. What a great setting there down in Central Texas and everything you're doing. How do people get a hold of you so they can learn more from you? Oh, that's easy. Um, Sandra D, as in Greece, D-E-E -E spelled out, Sandra D Robinson.com is the website. You can contact me through that. You can find me on social media. I'm on LinkedIn. I don't do Twitter too much. Uh, too many angry people on there for me. But um, but Instagram and Facebook, and all those usual places you can find me. So yeah, I'm happy to have a discussion with anybody, especially if they say that they've listened to or watched your show. Just send me a direct message and we can set up a time to chat about anything. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us here on Champions of Inspiration. It's been great. Thank you, Scott. And thank you all for joining us. We'll see you again next event. God bless.